Um, there are, uh, there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain uh, how they moved, their trajectory. Uh, they, they did not have um, an easily explainable pattern. Imagine a technology that can do six to 700 G-forces, that can fly at 13,000 miles an hour, that uh, it can evade radar, and that can fly through air and water and possibly space, and oh, by the way, has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings, no control surfaces, and yet still can defy the natural effects of Earth's gravity. That's precisely what we're seeing. The government has already stated for the record that they're real. I'm not telling you that. The United States government is telling you that. They seem to, these vehicles seem to have unlimited loiter time, which we don't have. Then the acceleration is beyond any, far beyond anything that we, that we're capable of. Well, I don't believe they're coming from foreign adversaries. Uh, if they were, why, that would suggest that they have a technology which is in a whole different sphere than anything we understand. Uh, and, uh, and frankly, China and Russia just aren't there. Do we have any sensors underwater uh, to um, detect on submerged UAPs? Uh, anything that is in the ocean or in the seas? So I think uh, that would be more appropriately addressed in closed session, sir. Now, I know what you've seen is what those Navy pilots saw in 2004, and there have been some 300 sightings since then. And I've talked to those pilots, and they know they saw something, and their radars locked onto it. And, and then all of a sudden, it was here on the surface, and then it's there. Uh, and they don't know what it is, and we don't know what it is. Lieutenant Graves told us pilots training off the Atlantic coast see things like that all the time. Every day. Every day for at least a couple of years. Um, wait, wait a minute, every day for a couple of years? Mm -hmm. I think some of the phenomena we're going to be seeing is, is, continues to be um, unexplained and um, might in fact be some type of phenomenon that is the result of something that um, we don't yet understand and that could involve some type of um, activity that uh, some might uh, say uh, constitutes a, a, a different form of life. And the main issues that Congress and others have been concerned about are basically safety of flight concerns and counterintelligence issues. But of course, there's always the question of, is there something else that we simply do not understand that might come extraterrestrially? The immediate concern is very twofold. One, this is a technology that we don't completely understand. And it seems to be defying our understanding of physics. And secondly, whoever's operating it or whoever's behind it, these aerial phenomena, seems to be keenly interested in our military capabilities. You know, there's a tendency for the UAP sightings and developments to occur around military assets, especially, it seems, around our naval assets. The fact that this is in our airspace and it's real, that's when it becomes compelling and that's when it becomes problematic. The question is, what is it? What are its intentions? What are its capabilities? Who is out there? Who are we? How did we get here? How did we become as we are? Who am I to say that planet Earth is the only location of a life form that is civilized and organized like ours? We are about to see a series of clips taken by highly proficient naval aviators and others. I think it's down there. We are going to review them to see what might be behind the mechanics of such objects. My name is Madhu Thangavelu. I conduct the Graduate Space Concept Studio in the Department of Astronautical Engineering at the University of Southern California.
In this video it shows an observation made by a Navy pilot in 2021. You can barely see what appears to be an object. The specific shape is very hard to tell. This could be anything. Anything from, from an aerial balloon to a specific object that seems to have been trailing the aircraft. The quality of the imaging will never fly in the scientific circles. These kind of imaging are not enough to make any kind of credible observation on what these objects are. This video entitled Gimbo from 2015 was recorded by a Navy fighter jet from the USS Theodore Roosevelt. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots from the west. Look at that thing, dude. This is a very interesting clip as well. It does not appear to be aerodynamically viable from the way we build vehicles. It's moving at extreme velocities and the most fascinating part of this particular video is that it is shot in infrared and you don't see any signs of exhaust or any indication of propulsion. It is making changes in its flight angle that don't tell us anything about how it is able to achieve those kinds of maneuvers. It's very clear from the dash that the pilot has acquired it, is locked on target, and they're watching it very carefully. Our vehicles would just crumble if we were trying to do that angle of attack. In this video entitled Go Fast by a Navy fighter jet from the nuclear aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt. This is a puzzling uh, clip. It is moving very fast and very low close to the surface of the ocean. I'm impressed. I'm impressed that our professionally trained pilots can lock on. I mean, at a minimum, uh, this is extremely good exercise for our fighter pilots, as long as it does not pose a threat. Oh my gosh, dude. What appears to have happened is that the vehicle submerged into the ocean. A term has been applied which says these are capable of transmedium flight. Again, our physics will not allow anything to do that kind of a maneuver. It appears to me that many of these objects are tracking military installations. We know in general that military installations are targeted. There is some correlation between nuclear armaments and these objects. This encounter entitled Tic Tac from 2004 was recorded aboard a Navy fighter jet from the nuclear aircraft carrier USS Nimitz. Look at the screen that the weapon systems officer is engaging. It gives you a lot of data on the screen that tells you whether the object is coming towards you. It tells you the rate of movements, the altitude. So some important data is on screen. So we are able to gauge the size of this object, but unfortunately, the resolution is lacking to make any kind of recommendation on what these objects might be. Tic Tac is the term that our wonderful Navy pilots have used many times to tell us what these objects are. The Tic Tacs have been observed a lot. Whatever these objects are, and whatever the propulsion that is being employed for its rapid movement are a mystery. I mean, um, particularly because we don't see any exhaust. These are fundamental principles in flight that we use for our vehicles. And uh, they seem to be lacking in these objects. This encounter from 2014 was recorded by a Chilean Navy helicopter. We are not the only nation that's been observing these kinds of phenomena. These objects appear all over the world, not only in the United States. In this particular instance, what you're seeing is that there is a trail. What that means is that it is either burning up something or 
it is ejecting an exhaust. If you look at how asteroids come into the atmosphere and you observe them in the infrared, this is the kind of signature you will get where you're burning up ablatory material. That is what you see in the trail. When I first saw this, I was looking to see how fast it was translating because many times upper stages of rocket ships can burn up in the sky. And this seemed a little bit too slow for that. Very hard to tell. It's, it's, it's puzzling. The Mexican Air Force pilots filmed this encounter in 2004, observing what appeared to be more than 10 unidentified flying objects. There have been many reports from Mexico about such sightings, particularly over volcanoes. They all seem to be moving with great precision in formation. In Mexico too, many of these objects have been observed by lots of people. This could even be a, a group of objects or one object. Is it all part of one vehicle? We have been working on aeronautical vehicles only for a little more than a century. Imagine what we would be capable of doing in a thousand years. This is the thing that bothers me. Our eyes are focused on what we can imagine and what we can do. I cannot see what the mind cannot comprehend. We are working with thoughts and principles of the past few hundred years in what we call modern science. Our science is very young. Who are we to say that there are not other creatures that have evolved a few thousand years more than we have? Their capabilities <laughs> will exceed our imaginations a thousandfold or a millionfold. I think it's moving. This video of a UFO hovering over Islamabad, Pakistan, was uploaded by Arslan Warik, who says he filmed the encounter on January 25th, 2022. Yep, definitely moving. The resolution is not good enough to make any decisions, but I can very quickly say that it is a drone of some sort. Islamabad is important for Pakistan. It's not only the capital of Pakistan, it also has defense implications for a nuclear nation. I had not seen this clip before, but thank you for bringing it up. It's definitely hovering and not moving. According to him, uh, it was there for two hours. So obviously it was an observation platform of sorts looking down at movements on the ground. I wish I knew more. Kind of unreal. This video taken from a U.S. Homeland Security aircraft over Puerto Rico on April 25th, 2013. These are the kind of images that concern a lot of our flying crew too. This kind of imaging also is helpful because we have a horizon and the background in view which we are able to use to calibrate what we are seeing. It seems to show a rapid movement. Oh, this is going on for a while. We don't know enough about transmedium vehicles and how they operate or whether it is some sort of uh, illusion that we are observing. There are many things out there that need explanation. The wrong thing to do is to just sweep it under the rug uh, because that is a dangerous thing to do uh, because at some point in time, it may come back to bite us. The military operates in ways that are not for public use. We require a lot more data. I don't believe, I don't buy that they don't have better data the latest jets and fighters, they are all equipped with extremely sharp viewing systems. It's not only to avoid collision and damage of our multi-million dollar assets, but also to discern a friend or foe. My thinking is there is data 
somebody has it.